Today, I want to talk to you about how to decide if going to law school is right for you. For those of you who are new, my name is Sydney Montgomery, and I'm a law school admission consultant specializing in working with first generation and minority applicants. Law school is a huge investment. Even if you're able to get full ride scholarships, law school is still three years of your life, which is a huge investment of your time and resources. And it can be scary to figure out if it's actually the next step for you. Thankfully, there are some questions that you can ask yourself to start to figure out if this is the right career path for you and whether you should apply to law school now or whether you should apply to law school in a few years. At its core, it's important to have an understanding of what lawyers actually do and what your particular drive is to the law. Now, conceptualizing what lawyers actually do is tricky. It's not as easy as understanding what doctors or engineers or scientists do. Oftentimes, people don't have direct experiences working with a lawyer or even fully understanding the different kinds of law and the different types of lawyers there are. I know for myself, as a first generation student, I didn't have a lot of exposure to the legal field and so it was hard to get a really good glimpse of what a typical day as a lawyer looked like. Shadowing programs are really great for that if you're able to do that. Sometimes students can have this drive, this idea that they know that law school is for them, but then there's this disconnect between that feeling and the change that they want to affect and then the day-to-day -day of being a lawyer. One of the things I strongly suggest you take the time to do is to drill down on what your why law is. What is it that is pulling you to the law? Where is your passion coming from? What issues are you so interested in being part of solving? Or what things make you so mad that you just wish you could change? And as you're thinking about this, try to be specific. Don't just say, I wanna be a voice for the voiceless or I wanna help marginalized communities, but try to drill down. If you wanna help marginalized communities, that's great. Do you wanna help them in housing? Do you wanna help them in education? Do you wanna help them in healthcare law? Do you wanna help them in criminal justice system or domestic violence? There are so many different ways that you can drill this down, but I usually suggest starting with a two-pronged approach. What area of law do you want to affect change in? And who do you want to serve? Or who do you want to uh, hold accountable? Who do you want to be your client in the legal arena? Now, I think a lot of people sometimes feel like drilling down too early might be putting themselves in a box. And I don't want to put you in a box. I want you to go to law school and explore and be inspired by your classes and clinics, have your mind opened by different discussions, try different things out, and do all of the exploring that you really should be doing in law school. But I want you to go in with a plan. And there's a couple reasons why. First off, your first year of law school is really hard. And sometimes you can feel really demotivated. I know that I did. When I was at Harvard, there were times that I was like, why am I here? I don't really like this, or this is really hard and I'm tired and I wanna do something else. However, when you have a concrete why law, when you have that reason that you wanna to go to law school, that will really push you through those moments. For me, I really wanted to do child advocacy and I remembered all the children that I wanted to help every time I felt discouraged. And that motivated me to get through that really boring case or the class that I wasn't that interested in. When you're in law school, everyone does take the scene classes your first year. And then after that, it's kind of up to you to decide what you wanna do. As a 2L or 3L, you may have a couple required classes, perhaps in evidence, but otherwise you can do whatever you want. And if you don't have any direction, it can feel overwhelming. You wanna make sure that you're making the best decisions, choosing clinics that are gonna help your career, being on journals that are gonna advance your scholarship, that are going to really tailor into the type of lawyer you want to be so that when you graduate you actually have all of those things on your law school resume and that'll help you get that next job because everything that you do in law school 
can be applied to what you want to do afterwards. And you can come out with concrete policy experience or concrete direct services experience. But to do that, you do have to have a little bit of focus and a little bit of intentionality in the courses that you choose in law school. So what are some other questions to ask yourself as you're trying to decide is law school for you? Well, the first question you can ask are what are my academic strengths and interests? And here, I don't want anyone to think that if they're not really good at writing or reading, then they can't be a lawyer. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that you do have to have a desire to get better. Being a lawyer involves a lot of reading, research, and writing. And you have to want to develop those skills. You want to develop your critical thinking skills and your analytical reasoning. You have to really understand that to be an effective lawyer, you're going to have to pour over cases. You're going to have to do a lot of research to find the answers to your legal questions, to best advocate for your client, to find all the little loopholes and gray areas. There is a lot of research reading and writing. And if you are not into that, if you don't like writing or you don't like research and reading, well, law school is going to be a little hard for you. And I would wonder if this is really the best career path and the best use of your skills. Now, Contrary to public opinion, you do not actually have to like public speaking to be a lawyer. I know that on TV, mostly we see courtroom dramas and trial lawyers, and they're making all of these impassioned speeches, and that's great. But not everyone has to be a trial lawyer. Some people prefer to draft documents and contracts to write memos and briefs and to do the behind the scenes work that doesn't involve that public speaking. But just so that I'm clear, even litigation attorneys have to do a lot of reading, research, and writing. There are so many motions and briefs that are involved in litigation. You have to do so much research and discovery. You have to look through bank statements and, and credit card bills and whatever the facts are and documents in order to build your case effectively. So even if you love public speaking and debate, you still have to do that research and writing to be an effective lawyer and to be the best advocate for your client. The second thing I would ask you is what are the experiences you have? Have you had any experience in the areas that you say you're passionate in? If you are really interested in animal rights and animal law, have you done any volunteer work at an animal shelter? Have you worked at any organizations that are doing that? These internships don't have to be legal. They can be a variety of things, although legal internships are great, but just getting exposure to the area or the type of law you might want to practice, even in a non-legal setting, can help you understand if this is the right career path for you, or if you feel like you can affect the change that you want to affect in that area without going to law school. Another thing that I really encourage students to do is to look up people who are in positions that they think that they might want to aspire to. Where did they get their start? Was it a legal job or a non-legal job? What were their first few jobs? Of course, when you first start out, you're not gonna be representing that celebrity or that movie star, but if you're interested in entertainment law, it might be nice to see what those first stepping stones are and if that's something that appeals to you. The third question I would ask is what kind of work-life balance do you want? Most attorneys do not work a typical nine to five. In fact, far from it, most attorneys do work a lot of hours, whether you're in a big law or often in a small firm, you will still be putting in a ton of hours to hit your billable requirements. While there are some nonprofit jobs and some government jobs that are nine to five, those aren't the most common legal jobs. So I want you to be looking at what kind of work-life balance you want, what do you want to be doing with your time outside of your professional career? And also what environment do you want? Do you want to be at a small place? Do you want to be at a large place? Do you want to have a typical supervisor who checks your work and maybe gives you some independent work? Or do you want to work on a team? These are all things that go into whether or not a particular field of law, type of law, or the law in general is going to be good for you. Now I want to take a moment to also explain that not all lawyers practice law. You don't have to practice law if you go to law school and there are a lot of jobs 
that are JD preferred. What that means is that they're jobs that prefer to hire people with a law degree because of the way that law school teaches you to think and to reason. They want people with a legal background who can do legal research, who can maybe draft documents, who can think critically in situations, who don't necessarily need to practice law, but who will better serve the company for having a law degree. These type of jobs are generally consulting jobs, accounting jobs, insurance jobs, or compliance jobs, although there could be others, especially in the business sector. So for these jobs, you might actually get hired over someone else or get a higher starting salary because you have that law degree. So a JD does open doors, but I don't think it's a good idea to go to law school just because it might open doors that you're not really sure you want. So I think that if you have a specific goal and you don't want to practice law, that's totally okay. But you shouldn't go to law school just in case you need a law degree. It's such a large investment, time and money that you really want to make sure that there is some intentionality behind your decision to go to law school. There are well over 30 different types of law. I couldn't even name them all if I really wanted to. The point is that there are so many ways that you can affect change with a law degree, but it's important for you to figure out what are the ways you want to affect change. What are the areas you want to be part of growing, developing, changing for the better? What areas do you want to impact? Where do you want to leave your mark? When you focus on that question, the question of is law school right for you? will become crystal clear. So tell me below in the comments, where are you in your journey? Are you just starting to think about law school? Are you in the middle of the application process? Are you at the end and getting ready to go to law school in the fall? I would love to help you and be part of your journey or just say hi and introduce myself. So let me know below in the comments so that I can extend a warm welcome to you. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe to this channel. Share this video with a friend or two that might need some encouragement or might be wrestling with this decision. And I will see you guys very soon. If you like this video, make sure to like and hit that subscribe button. Also, click the bell button if you want to know when the next video goes live for a notification.